My name is Dr. Anthony Lamera, I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about sternal wound infections. Now, sternal wound infections are actually quite a rare event, but if you have it, it could be associated with high morbidity and mortality. So just to make sure everyone's on the same page, I'm referring to patients who've actually had their sternum open. So if you're having open heart surgery, classically we'll divide your sternum and we'll separate your bone we'll do our procedure and put it back together. And when we do a sternal uh, a procedure, an open heart procedure, classically, and I, I have this model here, classically we'll divide the bone here and down the middle and separate it. I'm referring to patients who have infections in this general area after heart surgery. Now, sternal wound infections is actually quite rare. As I mentioned, there's two types of it actually. There's a superficial sternal wound infection, and that occurs somewhere in the order of 0.5 to 8%. And that's associated with a mortality of somewhere between 1 and 8%. These patients often will present with fever, they'll have wound drainage, and that's often either serosanguinous or pinkish, and sometimes you can see some purulent stare or yellowish fluid. They will often, often sometimes can have some pain as well. These patients are classically treated with just antibiotics. You'll give them antibiotic course, and that can vary somewhere from the order of 5 to sometimes 2 weeks, 5 days to 2 weeks, um, and then they're often fine. There's other patients, however, who have deep sternal wound infections, otherwise referred to as median stenitis, and that's actually pretty rare. It happens in 1 to 5% of the patients as well, but it has an associated mortality of somewhere between 10 and 47%. These patients will classically present with fever, chills, they can have elevated white blood cell counts, they often don't feel well, they can have chest pain, and, and classically these patients who have purulent drainage coming from their wounds, so pus coming from their wounds, and on different imaging studies you can clearly see an infection. And sometimes their sternum actually can come apart. Those patients are going to be treated very aggressively, classic with antibiotics, and sometimes they need to go back to the operating room to get their sternum cleaned up. Now, let's talk about how you diagnose these patients first. So the first thing when you're diagnosed someone with a sternal wound infection, the first thing is they got a good clinical history. Find out exactly what surgery they had, because there are certain surgeries that they're actually associated, have increased risk of uh, mediastinitis or infection. For example, coronary artery bypass grafting, where you're providing extra blood flow to the heart, actually has a higher risk of getting mediastinitis than someone having a valvular procedure. So you want to get a good cl clinical history, and after you do your history, then you want to get a good physical exam. On physical exam, you'll often see redness, what we refer to as erythema. You can get pus coming from the sternal wound, tenderness. You can actually some, sometimes feel sternal instability. After you've done your physical exam, another way to uh, help diagnose in sternal wound infections is with blood work. And in our blood work, we'll look for, number one, an elevated white blood cell count. An elevated white blood cell count is class classically associated with infection, but can also be associated with other things like inflammation. So you gotta be very careful there. Oftentimes, well, for these patients, we'll check their blood to see if there's infection there. So blood culture is another uh, blood test that we'll do to work up a someone who with infection. Another big diagnostic test we do for patients is imaging studies, classically being a CT scan in the chest. A CT scan in the chest will, will show us if there's evidence of bone involvement, if there's any fluid or inflammation around the sternum as well. So a CT scan in the chest is instrumental when we're trying to diagnose wounded, sternal wound infections. We can also get MRIs, but we often find that CT scans are faster uh, to get and actually to read. Now, once you've done your diagnostic studies and once again diagnosed your infection, if it's a superficial sternal wound infection, most likely those patients will get treated with antibiotics alone and follow up. In contrast, if it's a deep sternal wound infection, those patients will classically get treated with antibiotics for six weeks, mostly intravenous antibiotics, not just with a pill. Also, they'll often have to go to the operating room where their sternum is debrided, if there were sternal wires in before, they're often removed. And basically, you really want to make sure the health the tissue is very healthy. After you've actually cleaned up the wound, hopefully everything's okay, but to add to protection, to add to the to, uh, growth and prevention of infection, we'll often put a sponge, referred to as a wound vac. A wound vac is a device where we can actually put a sponge in the area and suck out unhealthy tissue. And so that's another option we have for people who have mediastinitis is a wound vac to suck out any infected cells or tissue. If that's not enough, oftentimes we'll contact our plastic surgery colleagues to provide muscle coverage. The pectoralis major muscle uh, on both sides is classically used to cover the area that's infected. And so that provides a good source of good uh, healthy tissue. So once again, 
Patients who have deep cervical wound infections are treated, with, are treated with six weeks of antibiotics. They have cervical wound debridement classically, and if they need it, they'll get additional coverage with either a wound vac or potentially muscle coverage. Okay. Afterwards, patients are classically followed in the hospital, and then they'll follow afterwards in their clinic. So once again, sternal wound infections, although rare, can have an actual long time, uh, excuse me, can have an impact, huge impact on patients in terms of morbidity and mortality. Now, what puts someone at risk for getting a sternal wound infection? Well, there are many risk factors. Number one, diabetes, obesity, COPD. If you've already had open heart surgery and then you have it again, those all increase your risk of getting a sternal wound infection. Blood transfusions can also increase the risk of a sternal wound infection. So these are the things that you have to look out for as clinicians when you're looking at someone who might get a sternal wound infection if you see these risk factors. Another common risk factor, by the way, I didn't mention is if these patients are immunocompromised, if they're on steroids or any immunotherapy for cancer uh, or some other treatment. These things actually can put them at increased risk for sternal wound infections. Okay, this is just a brief description of sternal wound infections. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you very much.